Hi, I'm Will. I'm here at Maker Fair 2012 with Eric from Open ROV. Eric, you make some cool undersea robots. Yeah. Tell me about them. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I think they're pretty cool. Um, so these are called telerobotic submarines, uh, or known as ROVs, or remotely operated vehicles. And um, basically what it is, is on board you have a bunch of electronics that would go inside of this tube. Some of those electronics are things like cameras and, and uh, for instance, an onboard camera could send live video from the ROV, which is deep under the water, up to the surface. And um, you see what that video sees um, on, your, on your screen, and you can drive the ROV around with these, these thrusters in the background. So it's just like playing a video game, but it's real life. Everything that needs to stay dry goes into this, this dry tube. Um, electronics, whatever experiment you have. Um, and then all the other stuff on the outside um, is used to control the robot. And then there's also this area on the bottom that you can mount whatever you want, like a, a robot arm or a metal detector. Scoop or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, okay. or a, maybe a harpoon gun, I don't know. <laughs> oh, come on. But the idea is to use this for science, to go down and collect specimens or take pictures of things underwater or whatever, right? Exactly. Look, I, I got into space exploration when I started out, and I thought it was really cool that there's all these foreign planets that we've never seen before. and. Um, you know, it was neat to think of these undiscovered worlds. Um, but then I realized the ocean and, and lakes, these are these are these mysterious places that hardly anyone's ever been able to see. And, and not only that, there's cool creatures down there that are, are you know, uh, interesting and, and it's, it's completely unexplored. So what if we could build a robot that can go down there? And, you know, we're already used to playing video games. If we can explore those underwater worlds um, in the same way, you don't need a rocket ship. All you need is curiosity and, and maybe a little boat. Our goal is that we want this to be something that's easy to build over a weekend and play around within your pool, but still capable of doing legitimate science. A researcher could use this. So we've designed it to be able to go to 100 meter depth. That's about 330 feet. And um, that's really interesting because at 100 meters, there's very little light. It's mysterious. The, the lights of the ROV are the only way you can see around. And you wouldn't normally be able to scuba dive that deep. So the creatures that you see are, are ones that normally might go uh, unseen. So 100 meters is also deep enough to get to most of the continental shelf. And um, I think that with that kind of access, people can start crowdsourcing exploration. We can get these out to lots of people. And what I envision is YouTube videos coming up of, hey, I was driving my open ROV around and this weird thing you know, swam in front of it. What is this, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so. So you have three thrusters, you have a vertical and then forward and back, right? The ROV is, is neutrally buoyant. That means that uh, if you put it in the water, it wouldn't sink or float. It would just stay at whatever depth you put it at. And um, this vertical thruster um, forces the ROV to move up or down, um, and then it just stays there. And then it has these two horizontal thrusters, and they allow the ROV to move forward or backward or rotate left and right. And how do you control the whole thing? Oh, it's a really cool controller interface. Um, right now what we're doing in the test tank is just something with an RC controller, um, but what we'd like to get to eventually is, um, is a joystick just like you'd use in a video game. My hope is that people who are used to playing video games will kind of get into that same mentality and forget that what they're doing now is reality. It's a real thing. Yeah. V very cool. So you guys are going to sell kits uh, real soon now, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the kits are really easy to assemble. Kind of, It's all these pieces of plastic that kind of conveniently fit together. So laser cut um, plexi, right? Yeah, all laser cut. If you uh, have access to a laser cutter, you know, there's people who go to places like Tech Shop or, yeah. or Maker Spaces, you can actually just go to our website and download the cut file and make it on your own. Um, you know, the bigger picture of what we're doing is, is this is not just open source, it's open hardware. And I think open hardware is this new movement. We'll be able to um, get people the ability to build these on their own so they can come up with their own ways of modifying and to make them better. We're not just crowdsourcing exploration, we're crowdsourcing the design. This is, uh, this is the real robot. and. Um, uh, this one's just an analog version. We're working on making a digital one, but uh, actually this one just went on this cool adventure. We went to this um, this underwater cave way up in the mountains of the Trinity Alps and uh, <sighs> flashback, mid 1800s, middle of the gold rush. Um, it's, uh, it's booming, there's tons of gold being found everywhere and uh, the settlers are invading these Native American lands. And so um, kind of to rebel against it, these two guys uh, two Native American guys rob a gold mining operation and made it make away with an estimated 100 pounds of gold before t killing the two guys that they robbed. And um, so it's the Wild West. They're, they're trying to get away with this gold and um, it's weighing them down. And a sheriff posse is gathered to chase after them and they're on the run. So um, because the gold's weighing them down, they decide they need to ditch it. And they do that and the posse catches up with them anyway. And they say, tell us where you hid the gold and we'll spare your lives. So both men said they hid it in this cave called the Hall City Cave, um, kind of south of Hayfork. And um, so despite the Sheriff Posse's promise, both men were hung on the spot. They go to the cave and apparently they find this cave and in the very back of it, they don't see anything except for this puddle, just this water filled hole in the ground. And um, in the very back of it is this almost perfectly circular six foot diameter hole that reportedly went straight down as far as they could see. Presuming the gold was thrown down there, no technology to explore it at the time, they give up. So 
flash forward, mid-1980s, this treasure hunter hears the story and um, hires an old timer to show him where the cave is. And uh, the story goes that doing snuba, which is like scuba diving but with an air hose, yeah. he went down 50 feet, as long as his hose could go, um, and he never found the bottom of the cave. And to this day, no one's found the gold, no one's found the end of the cave, and um, that's why we built this ROV. So did you find their gold? Well, we went a few weeks ago, and um, we actually have to be a little bit tight-lipped about uh, what happened, but there should be a story coming out pretty soon, and um, we're really excited. I mean, exploration with robots is the future. I think Hello Robotics um, offer huge potential as a tool for exploration, and, and that's what we're trying to show the world with this. So how do you connect to the surface with this? Is it a radio, or is it sonar, or something like yeah, that? Yeah, well, you know, uh, radio waves don't travel very well underwater, and so uh, we've come up with a way of using a tether. Uh, this is just a single twisted pair of um, just conductor wire. Um, and uh, we can talk 10 base T Ethernet through it. Okay. So um, that sends high definition video up and commands down. Um, and it's small enough and light enough that we don't have to worry about you know, adding buoyancy and things like that to make, it, uh, to make it not sink the ROV. Well, and because the ROV is relatively inexpensive, if the tether breaks and you lose it, you're out uh, maybe a grand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we want the ROV to be so low cost that it's not the end of the world if you lose it. And, um, you know, it's nice to send a robot to do the things that you wouldn't want to do yourself. There's the four Ds of robotics. If it's dull, dirty, dangerous, or distant, you better have a robot do it. And as for this cave, well, anyone who knows me knows my mother wouldn't let me go there in person. Cave diving is the scariest kind of diving. Thank you so much, Eric. <laughs> Thank you very much.